What's up, guys? Welcome back to Views, the podcast where Jason and I are giving up podcasting to dig up dinosaurs in our backyard. Jason, explain to them why we're doing this. Uh, well, hold on. Uh, bring it on in, Larry. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, okay. Oh, well, we already found the dinosaurs. Like, we're done. We're done. Yes. Yeah, we Tom. found a bunch. Yeah, we found there were seven in, in our backyard. Apparently, there was a giant dinosaur orgy that went on. And when the meteor hit, they just all died on top of each other. Well, this is going to be some good cash here. People are calling it the gold mine of the dinosaur industry. A lot of people are saying that that might be the worst intro we've done yet. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a lot of people say that too. But let's debunk those rumors <laughs> with a good dinosaur joke. Yeah, well. Or um, should we just put this joke to rest? Like to, to rest. T-Rex. Nope, the rumors are true. This is the worst <laughs> fucking intro ever. All right, roll the intro music. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another podcast from, from the oldest guy that lives in this house, Jason Nash, a 44-year-old beaten down man and a super sexy motherfucking stud. <laughs> Scott David Sire. No, no, David Dover. <laughs> oh, it's David. I thought, I thought you were going to say you going to introduce um, Scott. What's up, guys? So last podcast, last okay. Let, let's let's start with the obvious. First of all, last podcast, I brought up that um, that Jason's new girlfriend is taking up a lot of his time, mm -hmm. and I don't get to see him much. And I was kind of kidding. I just like poking fucking holes at you know you know what I mean. Yeah, you're like just I was joking kidding. around. I was just joking around. I was just having some fun. But this fucking week, you motherfucking bitch. <laughs> what happened? You this were week? gone all week, all week. What do you mean? I was I've been gone. saving this for the podcast. What do you mean I was gone all week? You have. I have not seen you all week, Jason. The entire weekend you, you were gone. You left. I, I you left for Vegas. I'm not even going to pretend like I'm not jealous, hurt, distraught. Oh, I know you don't have to pretend. I can tell. It's fucked up. It's fucked you up. You left for and Vegas. And you know what? I know Trisha listens to this. And Trisha, motherfucker, if you're listening to this, I want my motherfucking friend back. And I know where you live. I know where you live. I know what car you drive. <laughs> I know where you park. I'm going to key the whole thing. Or both of them. Sorry. She's been to jail. You haven't. I watch out who you're talking to. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, break it down for me. You've been hanging out with her a lot. You do. You do. You do realize that, right? That we don't hang out a lot. We hang out. Well, I have my kids over the weekend. That's not an excuse. And then um, you went to Vegas. I did go to Vegas. It was a stupid ass plan. Don't even bring that up. The right dumbest now. fucking plan I've ever heard anyone come up with. I you spent more energy. You wasted more time planning that fucking trip to Vegas to get. I don't know what you got in Vegas. Yeah, I for, got for. You got some footage of Alex in a bathrobe? Yeah. Basically, that's why you went to fucking Vegas? Yes. That's why you spent all of Tuesday planning flights, getting Jonah's birthday. Okay, birthday. Yeah, getting getting everyone's birthday so they could fly. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Jason, it the was- The worst plan. It was better than what you were doing on Tuesday, napping, because you were too tired from hanging out with Trish and your little kids. I, I'm not tired from hanging out with her. I'm tired from taking my kids to school. Yeah, bullshit. Dude- Bullshit. I am, you have no energy since you've gotten a girlfriend. I miss I, the old Nash train dude, that used to just run all night. I am fucking killing it on it life. <laughs> I'm fucking dude, getting some pussy. We, we don't. <laughs> I'm fucking losing weight. I was at the beach today. Yeah. Yesterday. What day is it? I was asleep right now. When David called me to do the podcast. I was literally asleep. I went to bed at 630. Jesus Christ. So yeah. this is this is let's let's It's let, 12 now. Before before I explain what happened this week or what happened I, at least yesterday. I want to I we we need to get this started right away cuz Jason, you do have bills that you need to pay. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, and Trisha then, wants a new Chanel bag. She does. And how much is that going to cost you? It's $7,000. You know what's not going to cost you a lot of money? What? Blue Apron straight to your door because Blue it. Apron is the leading meal kit delivery service in the United States. And while many people know what we do, many don't know about the types of meals you eat when you cook with Blue Apron. You're not just having burgers for dinner. You're making short rib burgers with a hoppy cheddar sauce on a pretzel bun. You're preparing seared steaks and thyme pan sauce with mashed potatoes, green beans, and crispy scall shallots. What's a shallot? A shallot is like an onion. I don't care. I don't care. I thought I heard someone ask what a shell it was. <laughs> Tony, is there someone else on the microphone in the headphones? Who's Tony? Tony's the engineer. Oh, we have an engineer? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's crispy shallots all in under 45 minutes and without a trip to the grocery store. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient recipe delivery service in the country. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone, even for Jason, yeah. who doesn't cook at home. 
Yeah. Now can with Blue Apron. I am. I'm starting to. I have been. This is the only time I do cook is when uh, Blue Apron sends us stuff. Yeah, and they hook it up. When you open that box and you see all the food, God damn, it's amazing. Mm. Blue Apron offers three plans. Two-person meal plan, meals that serve two people. Choose from eight new recipes per week with the choice to receive either two or three recipes any week. Or a family meal plan, meals that serve four people. Or a wine plan, six bottles of wine from renowned winemakers delivered monthly. Blue Apron delivers fresh pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step recipes right to your door. It can be cooked in under 45 minutes. The menu changes every week based on what's in season and is designed by Blue Apron in-house culinary team. They offer 12 new recipes each week, guys. It's amazing. Blue Apron is relatable and real. They want to hear about the food you love to cook and eat because they can add stuff to the menu whenever. It's delicious. Guys, they've got professional chefs. Putting in the care into creating recipes each week. That's amazing. Yeah. And Blue Apron is treating Views listeners to $30 off your first order if you visit blueapron.com slash views. Yeah, so, so check, check out, out this week's menu, menu and get, get your $30 off, off at blueapron.com slash views. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Yeah. Nice job on that read, David. That Thanks. was smooth. Well, back to the back to the intense part. So I just got back from Las Vegas. Yeah, tell me what happened. What um, did I miss? So, uh, guys, you guys got to follow along here because it's, it's, it's about to be a wild ride. So Do it. So on Tuesday. Well, I saw Fifty Shades of Grey while you were gone. Go ahead. You saw Fifty Shades of Grey? Fifty Shades Freed. With your with your kids and Trisha, I took the kids. I finally took the kids to Fifty Shades. You finally took the kids to a movie. They loved it. Was there a lot of sex in the movie? A lot. Of, is there a lot of sex in the movie? That's all they do is fuck over and over again. I've heard. They they have sex about forty times in the movie. Fuck off. You know, and it, it's 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 porn for women. Is it? It's porn it's for soft wo- core porn, right? Yeah. Do you see penis? No, no, they don't show penis. Bummer. What's the point? I of saw his balls a little bit at one point. You were looking for him. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I went online. He has a sex tape. <laughs> Jamie it wasn't related to the movie at all. <laughs> Did Trish like it? Oh, she loved it. Oh my god, she Did loved it. Did you guys it. have sex in the theater? Uh, no, Close. no, no. I told her on the way in. I said I don't want to end up on the news tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys saw fifty. You, you guys saw it in theaters, and yeah. then and then you guys. What did you guys do after? After we went, we went home. We went to sleep. And you tied her up, huh? Did you? Tie I took her, her up? to the red room. <laughs> What's that? That's that's. He has this red room. Uh huh. Um, in it's, his house, it's like a sex it's, dungeon. It's a sex dungeon, yeah. And he's got every sex toy you could ever imagine. And this this motherfucker, he loves to have sex. That's all he does. His boss her around, and, and she and doesn't she, listen to him. She tells her, and, and, and bitch, she, listen. She's submissive. Yeah, like, she's submissive. And he's like the oh man, mm-hmm. you are just a little person. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, he talks like that. Really? Yeah. So and and, and it's just really odd. It's just an odd thing to, did, did, to see. Did you and Trisha get it on afterwards? You could be open with our uh, listeners. I'm trying to think. I mean, yeah, because I we always do, but um, <laughs> but but <laughs> you ask. Fucking gross. It's like my grandparents saying they have sex. Other than Trisha. <laughs> She's my um, age. She's your age. <laughs> she, she uh, the 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 woman goes in and uh, like you know when you watch a porn, it's a lot of different people having sex. But this is just what do you mean a lot of people? Well, like you get a porn movie, you'll have all kinds of different people having sex. It's different scenes usually oh, in a porn movie. But I thought, this, I thought you watch like those like huge group of gangbangs. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to ten on one kind of action, and when I saw this couple shit. It's just un, it's just unrealistic. Like it's just like I don't it's know. It's because it's too sexy. It's too perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But- like, who would want to have sex that much? And then like they 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 they're like they get so hot. Um, they'll just have sex. Like someone will be chasing them. They'll be in a car chase, and then after the car chase, they go, "Oh, I gotta have sex now." Really? Yeah. And then she's <laughs> she. It's 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 so. I haven't f- seen any of them. I've never seen them either. Don't go see them. Should we watch one together? <laughs> Let's go to the movie theater to me and you. <laughs> I wanted to live tweet through it, but I didn't because I didn't want to ruin it. But like, there's this one thing. Like, here's and an example. I, I didn't want to ruin the blowjob I was getting from Trisha. <laughs> there's a one. There's, here's an idea of what it's like. So it's like they get married. So then now she's in. He's a billionaire. Yeah. And and but he's he's got like security, and so she's got to like deal with like now being his wife, and she has security everywhere she goes. But she's like a regular girl. So like, there's a scene where the woman the woman's like, um, she's like, what would you, what would you like for dinner, madam? And she's like, she's like, hmm, um, I don't know. Can I just cook for Christian tonight? And and the the woman's like, it's your kitchen, Mrs. Gray. 
you can do whatever you want. <laughs> and then like, so then like cue the music. She starts like cooking Dude, for I him. Have, I have goosebumps from you. It's from just you talking like that. It's just like this perfect thing for like women to watch and just like, yeah, I guess it's the same way when you watch like a, um, it's an, like an middle, action it's movie. It's like middle aged women, right? Like that's what, uh, no, there's a lot of young girls there. Like, well now, but I think the the book was for middle aged. women. Oh, the book was for middle aged women. Yeah. Oh, maybe. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Anyway, um, so go ahead. Ve- Las Vegas. What did yeah, I miss? Yeah, so Todd and Corinna. Um, Todd is our roommate. Corinna's his girlfriend who's our friend. Um, yeah. They yeah. went to Vegas to just... I saw, you, I saw you move in on that. That was pretty interesting. They, well, had, they had a plan for Vegas. To be fair, they invited me. <laughs> after I asked 10 times. No. <laughs> <laughs> Corinna invited you Corinna, when you took her up on it, but Corinna, she took back. She got really mad. I saw Corinna that part. Corinna invited me. Corinna invited me because I think she was, she was just like, okay, yeah, David comes. That's fine. And then I'm like, so Corinna, if you're inviting me, does that mean you just want a bunch of people to come? <laughs> and she, I guess she didn't know how serious I was when I said that, but I think she was just like, stupid Corinna. <laughs> of course you're serious. She was like, fine. So I, I called Jonah. I called Jason. I called Alex and I called Carly and Bruce and then Matt King. And we all ended up going other than Jason. Jason, uh, Jason ended up ditching. So um, I booked, I booked tickets yeah. for that night. Cause I had to, I had to film that day. Sure. So I booked tickets for nine 30. Uh-huh. We got to the airport yeah. at nine o'clock. Yeah, uh, sorry, eight forty-five. Eight forty-five. So close. Almost a- missed uh, LAX. LAX. Oh. Almost missed our flight. Oh Jesus! And I and I go in to put put in my code, like my 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 travel code to get my tickets. And they said, we lo- we love we love showing up early too, but maybe check in twenty four hours before your flight. What? Yeah, because I booked tickets for the next fucking day. No. Yeah. So we were we were more than twenty four hours early for the flight. Oh no. So I'm like, this is fucking stupid. I would uh, if someone else, if Jason did this, I would never let him live it down. So I told the boys that the airline lost our tickets, and I lied to them because um, I didn't want them to think I made a mistake. No, I'm kidding. No, no, I, I, told, I told them I fucked up. Huh. Um. So then, so, <laughs> so, so then I'm like, can we can we change the tickets? And the guy's like, no way. So I called my assistant. Thank God I have one. Natalie got us tickets for ten thirty. For a Southwest flight, so we just sat at the, the uh, we just sat at the um, we just sat at the airport for two hours. Did you have to move? Did you have to move uh, terminals? Terminals? Yeah, yeah, we had to walk all the way from Terminal Seven to Terminal One, okay. which, if you know, that's brutal. That's that's you got to go all the way around. Can't you just cut across like we did that time? Yeah. Okay. But we went all the way around. <laughs> you did. Um. Anyway, so we get. I'm we get so to- fucking glad I didn't come with you. Oh, you would have hated it. Listen, oh, this sounds. Sh- Awful already. Shut up, shut up. Just the anxiety and the stress. So we got... Even before we you get there. You would have been filming all of this and you would have loved it. I don't like filming shit like this because I just... I don't enjoy it as much. Right. Um, and then we got to... Then we got to our 1030 flight and it got delayed an hour. So we're at the airport till 1130. No. Yeah. Fuck it. 1130. To go to Vegas for where we're only staying till noon the next day. So we were going to go to Vegas for less than 11 hours. And we're only staying there for one night, and this is the night. So we get there, 11.30, right? Um, 11.30, we get on the flight. We land at 12.30. We're at the hotel. We arrive at the hotel at 1 o'clock. Oh, my God. Thank God I didn't go. Thank fucking God I didn't go. This sounds like the worst fucking nightmare ever. Listen, so it's it's 1 a.m. It's 1 a.m. We're checking in. The line's long to check in for God knows. At 1 a.m.? I don't fucking know. It's (laughs) Vegas. Um, It takes to like 1.12 to get checked in. And we're like, we're only here for a night. Help us out here. He upgrades us to like the biggest fucking room he's got. He's like, right. you're going to love this one. We have three rooms. He upgrades all three of them. They're right by each other. They're huge rooms. He hooks it up. So now it's like 145. And we're at our rooms. We put our stuff down. We hang out in the room a little bit. And we're just like, okay, let's go fucking, let's go gamble a bit. So we went down. I gambled. Um, if you guys remember listening to the podcast, a couple months back, I went to Vegas and I got $10,000. I, I took $10,000 and I turned them into chips because I, because I ended up winning. So I had $11,000 worth of chips, no cash, and I needed to change it in for cash, right? Right. And uh, the casino wouldn't let me change in the chips. Right. This was a couple months ago because I have a DACA card instead of a driver's license that was valid. <clears throat> so the fucked up part is they let me play. They let me play the games and I, they let me change the cash into chips, but they wouldn't let me get the chips into cash. So now I had to take the chips back with me. So for, for the last couple months, I've had $11,000 worth of chips sitting at my house and I was waiting to renew my license so I can go back to Vegas and get 
get my cash back. Right. And it's kind of hard to follow. Maybe no, 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 no. Rewind the podcast this part just to listen to it again. And I go back to Vegas. I have I have the chips that I've had for a couple months with me since November. Yeah. It's eleven thousand five hundred dollars, and I have my brand new license. And I go to the teller, and I'm like, "Can I cash these in?" And he's like, um, "I don't think so. I don't. We we have no record of you playing at this casino." I'm like, "What do you mean you have no record of Whoa. me?" And they're like, "We just we the cameras they're they're not registering you ever playing here. There's no documentation of you of you winning those chips." I'm like, "I won the chips," and then. And then he calls his like superior over his like manager and she's like, oh, sir, we can't do anything. We went back to November 19th. It never shows you playing at any of these tables. I'm like, ma'am, you, I, I want to cash these chips in cause you wouldn't let me do it before. And she's like, it's your fault for leaving the casino with the chips. You should have cashed them in that day. And I'm like, are you fucking like, I, w- I was furious. I'm like, ma'am, Whoa. you didn't let me cash my chips in. Like I was like talking like this, like a, like a douche because I was so angry. I was like, ma'am, you didn't let me cash my chips in because of my legal status in this country, but you let me play and you took my money. You guys have my money right now. And she's like, sir, there's nothing we can do. I'm like, I want to talk. I want to talk to your manager. Wow. And then, and then her manager came out, which was like an older man. And he goes, there's, there's nothing we can do. You shouldn't have left the casino without cashing the chips. You should have got something in writing. I'm like, sir, I, I don't know what's going on. I came here and I go to him. I came here. I gave you this card, this, cause I have a DACA card. It shows that like I'm, I'm here under DACA right. and I'm like, I showed you this card and you wouldn't let me cash in my chips. And he goes, holy shit. I remember you. Hold on, hold on. And he ran to a phone and he like called some people and he's like, oh, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. And he like took me to the bank. Uh, he took me to the teller, and he's like, "Get this guy his money," because I he, he, they felt really bad when they found out that like that and like you were they, David Dobrik from YouTube. <laughs> no, like because I the think the guy remembered you really. Yeah, he remembered the situation. Wow. I think he remembered me because I genuinely think I could have, I could have, I, 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 I this could be crazy. This could be me, twenty one year old me, thinking that this situation was worse than it was. But I feel like I could have sued. Because granted, eleven thousand wasn't the most amount of money, but they took my money. They sure. let me play their games. Sure. But then they wouldn't let me get my money back. Right. That doesn't make any sense. That's right. really fucked up. And I think, I think he knew how 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 they fucked up the first time it happened. Right. That's why this time when I came back, he was so urgent. He's like, "Fuck, let's get this fixed." Before oh, so you think he fucked up the first time? I think they fucked up the first time, and he didn't want me to be pissed and file a complaint anywhere else. Because right. it would have fucked the casino. But yeah, he was really nice, and he gave me my cash. <laughs> and then I went and gambled it and lost it again. <laughs> I went and gambled it, and I fucking was on fire. You were. I was on fire. I went around. I'm like, my dad owns this casino. I do that thing every time. Every time I'm on fire, I'm like, my dad owns a casino. Yeah. I'm like, I'm counting cards right now. I'm really good at it. Right. And Bruce is like, yep, his dad owns a casino. His name is Mr. Palace, because we're at the Caesars <laughs> Palace. Um, yeah, I, I was on fire. I was winning a couple thousand dollars here and there, and it was just like, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it was great. Roulette? I no blackjack. I would I would win. I, like I won like four grand at one table, and then I went to the next. I no won two way. grand there, and I just kept no leaving. Way. Yeah. I, and I, then I, what happened? How much did you leave? I with? lost it all. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, I, I was up like I'm up like four thousand. That's great. Yeah, so I made four thousand on this trip uh, from gambling. Fuck yeah. But anyway, um, this was this. What this, time is this now? This is um, this is four thirty a.m. So four thirty a.m. Aren't you exhausted? N- no, because I heard. And if the, uh, this may be true, this may not be true, that the casino pumps air into the casino to keep you up. And there's no clocks in a casino, so you don't know what time it is. And you feel like you're fucking high yeah. at this casino. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's literally like being on, it's like being on Adderall. It's like being coked up. Like you're so, you're, cause it, it, I don't know how to explain it. It could just be like gambling and like the adrenaline you feel through gambling. Sure. But it genuinely feels like they're pumping like oxygen into the casino to make you stay up. Um, I want to continue the story. Sure. But I, I have to pay for bills. Dollarshaveclub.com. They deliver everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. Thousands of athletes going for the gold right now. Got me thinking. With all that Dollar Shave Club has been doing lately, as a clear champions of the bathroom, they deserve a gold medal. Mm. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's pretty cute. I like when Dollar Shave Clubs write stuff like that. Dollar Shave Club is more than just razors. Dollar Shave Club is better than shopping in a store. They have everything. And I mean everything you need to look, smell, and feel your best. Shampoo, body wash, toothpaste, and of course, the best razors I've ever used. I get an amazing high-quality shave every morning for my Dollar Shave Club executive razor. 
And the true gold standard of any morning routine is our Dr. Carver Shave Butter, David. It helps the razor gently glide across your skin. Dollar Shave Club delivers everything to you. That means no more trips to the store, wandering the aisles, hunting for razors, shampoo, toothpaste, or taking time out of your day to go for shopping so you can play at being a cashier, scanning and bagging your own stuff. Go for the gold. Join Dollar Shave Club today, and for just $5 with free shipping, you'll get there. S-H-I-T Shower Shave Whoa. Starter Set. Holy oh, shit. Man, Dollar Shave. Dollar Shave Club blue. just put the S word into their ad. <laughs> shit Shower Shave Starter Set. It has a six-blade executive razor plus trial sizes of shave butter, body cleanser, and one-wipe Charlie's. Then keep the blades coming for a few bucks more a month. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash views. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash views. I love when these ads have swears in them. Yeah, a little body this week. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it was I, very... I'm starting to like get a feel for the guy who writes these ads. He's I, a bold, he's I a bold dude. Them. Are you fucking serious? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, you know Me, what? baby. I guess that would explain you being so busy all the time and not being around. So busy with I my new it, girlfriend who I, I love. You know, love is such a wonderful thing. I David. thought it was only you and Trisha, but here you are writing these amazing ads. Sorry. Let me not, let me not get sidetracked. Anyway, it's 430, right? I'm not exhausted. I have to go for my run. Who else is up so far? Everybody? Everybody. Everybody. Everybody's up. Everybody's Gambling? Up. Everybody's up gambling. They're drinking. They're doing the whole thing. Everybody's drunk. Okay. Um, it's 4.30. I have to go for my run. So I go back to my room. I put on my shorts, and I, and I just go for a run on the strip. I run for like a mile and a half. Yeah. I get back. I do my sit-ups and my push-ups. Cause I'm, guys, I'm 18 days in a row for exercise right now, and I can't fuck that up. That's great. Like, there's no way. And uh, then I get back from my run and everything. I'm done at around like 5.20. And then I go and join them at Johnny Rockets. They're eating across the street at like 520 in the morning. <laughs> and then we leave at 540 a.m. Sounds awful. Sorry, not, no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm a little bit back. At 5 a.m. we leave Johnny Rockets. Okay. Um, and, and then we go to the room and we just end up shooting at the room a little bit. Right. We just did a little vlogging. And then I get to bed at like 620, 630. And then we wake up and then we woke up at 10 a.m. to check out of our rooms and get on our flight. So I'm coming back to L.A. now. Um, our flight leaves at like 12, and it was supposed to get here at like 1 or 2. Yeah. And um, I got on my flight. We all got on the flight. I was like, fuck, I really want to stay for another day. Sure. Because I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I just, it just feels right to stay for another day. I get on the flight. We're sitting, and I'm like, guys, we should, we should fucking stay for one more day. And I text you. I'm like, the only reason I'd go back right now is if Jason's free. Because I, I know you're busy with Trisha a lot. Yeah. And um, I text Jason and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm at Santa Monica. And I'm like, fuck it. He's with Trisha at Santa Monica. That's a fucking thing. They're at the beach. They're doing their own thing. I asked I know. Him, I texted back. I'm at Santa Monica. Do you need footage? Do you need anything? You texted me that right after <laughs> I got off. I, and then right when you said I'm at Santa Monica, um, I, I went to the flight attendant. Everyone's already boarded the plane. The doors are closed. And I'm like, listen, you can say no, but can we get off this flight right now? And she's like, yeah, you can. And I'm like, okay. So they opened up the doors and we got off the flight and we. Who's took, we? Uh, me and Jonah. And we took a cab back to the Caesars Hotel. And Brandon and Alex stayed on the flight and went home. And um, we were like, fuck yeah, we're staying. We were so fucking pumped. And I mean, halfway down, like halfway out of the airplane, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> I was like, this is the stupidest fucking idea. Why did you get on the plane and get off? I don't know. And, and you had your out. We got off the plane and I'm like, that, this is dumb. This is dumb. Why am I going back? Because I just need to edit my vlog. Like, why am I going back to edit my vlog? So I got off the plane and um, yeah, we went back to the Caesars Hotel and I'm completely regretting it. And then we got back on the plane at 9 p.m. and we came home. And now it's 12.45 a.m. and we're recording the podcast. Right before, right before we got off the plane, Jonah's like, do you want me to get us kicked off the plane? And I'm like, no, please fucking don't. Please oh, my don't. God. It's, and it's embarrassing. And he starts oh. hyperventilating. No. Yeah. And people are looking at him. And I'm like, Jonah, please stop. Please stop. This isn't funny. Like, I'm not filming or egging him on. I'm like, Jonah, please stop doing this. And he's like, I need to get off. I need to get off. No. And I'm like, fuck, 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 no. fuck, fuck. And a flight attendant comes over. And she's like, sir, we're going to need you to leave the plane if you're going to be acting like this. And then Brandon's like, Jonah, stop fucking acting like this. Stop fucking acting like this. No. Yeah, so. That would have made me fucking crazy if he did <laughs> yeah, that. I would have had so yeah. much anxiety. Because so when you say even say the word bomb in the airport, I hate that. Yeah, I say bomb at the airport. Like I whisper it to Jason and he just flips shit. <laughs> so, so I know that this would have um, frustrated him. But yeah, um, so we got off the flight. And then on our flight over here at 9 p.m., um, there was a fight that broke out like in the back of my flight. And some girl just walked off because this guy called her a whore. 
And she's like, I'm not flying here. And she just walked off the flight. What? It was like the last flight of the day. And she's like, he called me a whore. And Her boyfriend? Like, no. Just some random some guy. Some random guy. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's pretty serious Did shit. you get dinner tonight in Vegas? Yeah, I went to Gordon Ramsay's. I had oh, curry. You, you love that place. And, you had curry? And dude, I, I'm telling you, I, I love it. It tastes great. But I was like... I was on the toilet for like an hour right before my flight. Oh no. It was terrifying. Um guys, um the, we've we've been getting some podcast topics. A lot of gun control stuff. A lot of like I'm literally reading I'm literally reading a they lot. They had of gun- a town hall tonight. Yeah. In what's part- your what's your idea on gun control? Have we talked about gun control? They they had the craziest town hall on CNN tonight. Really? Yeah, it okay, was so it was insane. If you're if you're living under fucking rock, um there's been an awful shooting. Right. Um in Florida, once in, again. In Parkland, yeah. Um, where uh, 17, yeah. 17 or 18 or 19 yeah. students were killed from this, this I don't know, 19, 20-year-old fucking moron. Yeah. And, dude, I, I've, I've, I've watched videos of this guy, like, um, just sitting at court. Have you seen those? Like, it's fucking so weird. What's he look like? He, I mean, I know what he looks like, but what yeah, was he doing I mean, in court? Just, I mean, he could look like a regular kid, and I'd say he looks like a flip, psychopath. Was he, he flipping out in court, or is he just no, looked he normal? No, he was quiet, and he was grinning. You know, he's a fucking psycho. He's like the Joker from... He was grinning like what? I don't like want to say he's the Joker from Dark Knight, because I don't want to give him that fucking that dopeness. I mean, he's a fucking piece of shit. Anyway, the, the big argument now is gun control. Right. And everybody's always just like... Everybody's... I feel like there's this whole argument when gun control comes out... And it's like, we shouldn't be talking about gun control right now. We should be mourning victims, which is, I think, is the most fucking bizarre. I think we've talked about this. Yeah, yeah. I think that's very bizarre. Says it is odd. When, when, when would be the time to talk about it? That's if exactly not now. the time to talk about it. Yeah. Like, you, you wait two weeks. No one's talking about See it. See what anymore. Trump said today? He said he thinks teachers should be armed. I, I don't, I, I don't <laughs> agree with that. <laughs> he just keeps saying that. Anyways, he, they, he, they had this. He's just saying, let's sell more guns. He, okay, so, so here's, here's what I think about gun control. I think we've talked about it, and uh, keep in mind, I'm 21 years old, so I may not know a lot, um, but I think, I think the main argument isn't let's take away all guns, right? Sure. Because that's not, I don't think that's fucking possible. It's, it's A, let's make guns 30 times harder to get, and B, let's like get rid of these like AR-15s and these automatic and like semiotic weapons. Like, sure. There's no need for them. Because because the the way, the way the, the, from what I've been reading, is the way the Constitution was wrote was written, sorry, the Second Amendment was the right to bear arms or whatever, mm-hmm. but it was it was when guns were, you know, single-fire weapons. Yeah, like mus- muskets. Yeah, so you, you'd sh- shoot the gun once, and if you wanted to commit a mass shooting, you'd have 30 people beating your fucking ass by the time you can put the next bullet in. Yeah. And that's why the Second Amendment is so outdated, because now you can pull off, you can shoot 100 people uh, before anybody even bats an eye. Yeah. And it's fucking psychotic. And no one should have access to guns like this. And it's just like, it's, I understand, I, I do, um, Brandon is, Brandon, our friend, is completely opposed to having guns. Okay. He's saying people shouldn't even have pistols like in mm. their houses, which, which I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know where that lies because if someone breaks into the, if everyone knows that no one has pistols, right. I feel like people breaking into people's homes would be a lot scarier of situations, right? Right. Like if, if you knew I live by myself and I'm 21 years old and you're a big dude who works out every fucking day, you're going to come in and you're going to murder me with your hands. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't like you, you're not, you're going to be like, Oh, he doesn't have, he obviously doesn't have a gun. Yeah. Cause I'm he's gonna, not allowed to have one. I'm going to fucking kill this guy. Sure. So, so I don't know. I bottom line is I think there's no fucking reason to have like, there was a moment tonight. They had this woman from the NRA. They had a giant, they had everybody from the town. It would look like it was like at least, 8,000 people in this CNN uh, round table. It was all the kids. Not a round table. It was a town hall. So they had some. They had Marco Rubio from Florida, and then they had this woman from the NRA, and she had to face like 10,000 kids just bullshit at her on CNN with Jake Tapper. Oh, really? And the, the girl, girl cuts up there, and there was this one girl, this girl with the shaved head, who was like all over Twitter because she made a really great speech. So she asked her, she said, okay, you know, what are you going to do about the assault rifles? And the woman goes, the woman was such a fucking bitch. She goes, she goes first of all, let me just say, um, I was a very politically charged teenager like yourself. And one day, you could be sitting where I'm sitting like that. And everyone just goes, boo. They just booed the fuck out of her. And the woman wouldn't answer the question. 
She would she wouldn't say like get rid of the guns. It was fucking weird. Even Marco Rubio. What do you think? What do you think about gun control? I think they're gonna make some changes in the know, next what month. Do you think they, if you were president, what do you think they should do? Just get her, get rid of the AK forty sevens and get, the, the AR fifteens. Yeah, just you get think rid people of should have pistols. Yeah, you should be able to have a gun because if you live in a poor area, but with, you like need a gun but with proper clearance. There shouldn't be a high school. Yeah, you clearance. should have a license, and they, you know it should be you should be, have to be over twenty one to have a gun. I I would yeah I, I would. think I would even say maybe a little older. I think I, you know I listen. I'm a, I can't promote alcohol because I'm not 25. Right, but you can go to war. I can go to war, and yeah, that's that's such a big argument too. Is you can, you can you can go to you can. Well, well what's the argument? Boy, alcohol. I'd love it if you got drafted. That would be well, funny. That, that, that's the whole drinking argument. Is you, you can it. go to war, but you can't have a drink when you're 18. That's a different argument. But yeah, no, it's, it's the argument. Th- th- these are the two arguments that I've been thinking about. The one argument is that th- that you can drink when you're 21 and you can own a gun when you're 18. That blows my fucking mind. That blows my mind. Yeah. That's well, brutal. Because it, uh, uh, it makes no sense. Oh, sorry. What's your the, argument? I think the argument that look, I'm a liberal person, I'm anti-gun person, but if someone wants to have a gun, that's fine. But the, the, the argument that a lot of people make is they need the, they need the AR-15 in terms of like... If the government takes over? Yeah. It's, it's bullshit. I know it's bullshit, but that's, that's their so, argument. That's we're not we're not fucking a, we're not a colony anymore. There's fucking or thousands then, of people. Or then like my my ex wife, she's she's really all about gun control and stuff. And I I keep thinking, well like well how else could you solve the problem? Like okay, if you're not going to get rid of the guns, then why like why isn't the same thing at airport securities as we have at schools? Like you sh- it should be the same. Like the the amount of security I mean, you have at an airport, you should put it at school now. The thing is, like, if you're not going to get rid of the guns, it's going to be like that. But that it's going to be like what? It's the security is going to be like that. But that's fucking bullshit. It shouldn't have to be like that. Well, it shouldn't have to be like that at the airport either. But it is. And we all take our shoes off. You're right. And go through that bullshit. Can I say one thing that's like maybe off topic, but I've been thinking about it. I think. Um, hear me out on your this. vlogs are lit. My vlogs are lit. Um, I think Trump. Is um is is him being president is a really good thing for the future. Oh yeah, because you think it's gonna bring out someone great. I think it's a great gonna, candidate. I think it. I think every kid right now, like growing up, is gonna be so against Trump and against his policies, and they're so involved in politics because he's such a necessary evil to have right now. Like he's, I think he's what. He's what the future needed. Sure. He, he, I think he's bringing out so many like young political activists. And I think he's like, he's starting like our own revolution against him. I like what you're saying. I think you're right. But I also think that those kids, they'll, they'll get to be 50 and they'll, they'll change. You're right. Some will, but and they won't, they won't, you know, they'll just turn into more Trumps. I don't, I don't think it's what happens. Happen. I, I'm, I can't tell you how many of my this, friends were like is, liberal right, and now they're right. like Republican. Okay, but you you grew up in a different time. This is social media. This is like this is you're constantly manipulated by your friends around you. So it's like it's what social media likes. You kind of start liking yourself. Like it's like right. If I'm on Twitter, I can't fucking go and read anything positive about Trump ever. If I'm growing up, really? Yeah. Do well, I think there's a lot of positive. Th- shit that's about why. Trump that's why no Twitter. fucking no kid in middle school unless they're like you know, being hipster and they like swimming against the current. Right. Like Trump. Everyone hates Trump. It's because it's the popular thing to do on social media. And I think that's what's so good about it. And it's a big thing for Democrats. I, I don't know the difference between being a Democrat and Republican, really. Sure you but, do. Uh, okay, I do. We've talked about it. But um, but I think, um, I think it's a really good thing for Democrats because there's a lot of future Democrats that are like being born here from like all this bullshit that's happening and from uh-huh. all the things that Trump isn't doing to change things. Yeah. I mean, so I think that's the silver lining about having Trump as our president is he's so fucking awful that good things are going to come out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could see that. Bad I, things have to happen for, you know, changes to be made and Trump's just one big... You think he'll make it through four years? Yeah, 100%. You do? Yes. I, dude, everybody fucking says he won't. I just, I don't see how that's possible. Like, I, I don't know. Like... Dude, think something's gonna happen. No, after after he became president, all bets were off. Like it's fucking, it's done deal. You know what it's I mean? Done, yeah. Yeah, like whatever whatever Trump says will happen because he's fucking. Think he'll get reelected? I don't know. I don't. No fucking way. He, if he gets reelected, it's it's crazy, but it'll never ever. Like let's say let's say you can't. Let's say you can run more than two times. Yeah. 
this is this is the only year he get reelected. Never again, I think, in the next thirty years would he ever get reelected because I think that's when kids are gonna get to be old enough to start voting to vote and shit. Yeah, so I think oh, they'll be old enough. A no, lot of them will be old enough in a couple a lot, of years. Yeah, you're right, but there's still like little younger kids that are already like against Trump that can't vote for. Charlie's election. against Trump. I know that. My daughter, How my nine year old. She's nine. She's she doesn't nine. like him. She doesn't like Trump? No, she's leading the charge at her school, but none of them can vote. Bummer. But it's is, a bummer. Is it, is it doing anything? Well, they, um, they're they talking about having a second recess. That's good. They're revolting. They should have more free time. Do you know kids are walking out of school? They're having walkouts because they don't want to get shot? The, the, uh, my teacher actually tweeted that. He said, he said, I think every kid should protest. By not going to school. He just didn't want to go to work that day. <laughs> no, he's not a teacher anymore. <laughs> oh. Uh, Mr. Killinger. Mr. Killinger, yeah. yeah that, that's what I, I figured. Um, and that, that's such a good idea because, A, it's going to fuck with everyone, and, B, kids would love to do that <laughs> even if you don't care about gun control. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but they're just going to, like, get punished but by the principal. Every, not if everybody does it. Not necessarily. I mean, no, the principal, dude. I guess if every, I guess, I don't know. And if parents get involved, which I know they would get behind something like that. There's going to be a big march in Washington. We should go. Really? Yeah. About gun control? Mm-hmm. All these kids are going to march. Wow. Like, like a million, like what they did for uh, kids, for women and Trump. Kids and, are like flying out to it? Yeah. I just, I don't, I don't But under- Marco Rubio. Oh, I also don't understand this. Sorry we're on gun control for so long. Um, but I also don't understand, like I was watching all these like, um, these people that voted that are pro NRA, like all these um, uh, congressmen sure. and women that are pro NRA <laughs> and they show how much money they each get from the NRA. Nah. And like it'll show... I'm making up a name. I'm, I'm making up a complete name. Uh, Nancy Grace uh, received two thousand dollars from the NRA last year. Right. Like, what the fuck are you doing for two thousand dollars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't yeah. be lifting a fucking finger for two grand. <laughs> two thousand uh, dollars? You're voting. You're voting for fucking guns to be everywhere. What are you fucking out of your mind? That's it. That was the, the, the two thousand dollars. She made two thousand dollars <laughs> for vo- voting pro guns. What a dumb bitch. What, 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 I mean, I don't, listen. I I like money as the next guy, but I wouldn't fucking vote pro guns. Or take their money and then don't vote. That's what I would do. I, it's fucking beyond me. <laughs> I always thought it was like hundreds of millions of dollars these guys were getting to vote uh, pro guns, but they were getting they're getting paid two like the most that anybody's getting paid is like I mean actually I'm making this up, but like the highest I saw was like forty grand. Really? Like, Come on. That's Come it? on. Yeah, because I can't imagine the NRA has that much money. It's fucking bullshit. Reg- okay, anyway, what you can take from this discussion is um, Trump sucks, but don't worry. Um, there's there's sunshine coming up on the horizon. And you know why there's, yeah, we got why people, there's sunshine why? coming up on the why horizon? Why is that? Why? Because if you're hiring, oh! posting your position to job sites and waiting and waiting for the right people to see it, is isn't fun. That's why you got to use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter. The smarter way. You build a platform that finds the job candidates for you. ZipRecruiter learns what you're looking for, identifies people with the right experience, and invites them to apply to your job. These invitations have revolutionized how you find your next hire. In fact, 80% of employers who post the job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the j- site in just one day. And ZipRecruiter doesn't stop there. Even They even spotlight the strongest applications you receive, so you never miss a great match. The right candidates are out there. ZipRecruiter is how you find them. Businesses of all sizes trust ZipRecruiter for their hiring needs. Right now, our listeners can get ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Nash. ZipRecruiter.com slash Nash. ZipRecruiter.com slash Nash. Did you guys get it? That's ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Mm -hmm. ZipRecruiter, I I really, really love you guys. Please change that link already. Great job, ZipRecruiter. Keep it coming. We love you. It's been a couple months, and it hasn't said slash Dobrik. It's still slash Nash. I'm I'm totally fine with that. I I may understand where you're coming from, but I also kind of don't understand where you're coming from. Um, Jason, the podcast is coming to a close. It is coming to a close. Uh, But uh, it's kind of sad. And what else is coming to a close? Um, you gonna get some rest now? I, I'm gonna get some rest right now. Bed? I'm going. I have a meeting in Beverly Hills at ten o'clock in the morning tomorrow. How about what? Secret. Tell me. I can't. Why not? Because it's secret for the people listening. It'll be a surprise. Mm. I'll tell you right after oh, we turn the podcast. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, it yeah. rhymes with Topra Tinfree. 
No, but, it, but guys, Oprah on the vlog. guys, if anybody has a connect to Oprah Winfrey, please let me know. I'm trying to surprise Josh Peck for a vlog. And he gave me permission. Just please help me out. Oprah, if you're listening to this, let's make something happen, Josh girl. Josh is listening to this. I, 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 dude, he doesn't know. He can't get a reach of Oprah either. Like, Oprah is like a fucking god in this world. She's like genuinely that hard to get a hold of. Oh. Not even Josh Peck can get a hold of her. Wow. Yeah. Well, guys, that's it for today's podcast. Send us more topics to talk about. Um, Read up on the gun control stuff. It's pretty interesting, and I want to hear your input, too. Um, Don't worry, guys. Trump's gone soon. And if you're a Trump supporter, I'm sure there's good reasons for it, which I'm not looking into because I'm just on social media. I don't know. Yeah, and and tweet us stuff that happens with gun control because they say next week stuff's going to happen. There's going to be votes. Also, form your own opinions. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Don't.